All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to class. Um, we're going to talk about how to choose an introductory monologue. Hey, before we do that, let me click over here, maybe. No, not this one. Hey, we're going to look right here real quick. Just some important information for you to know. Thespian Troop Interest Meeting this Thursday, 415 Black Box 4152. Uh, please, please plan on being there. Uh, you, even you at home, can come. If you're comfortable, we will be masking and socially distant. Uh, you can come in the side door for Black Box. And we're having a Booster Club meeting Thursday, August 27th, 6 30 p.m. at Tanglewood Park. So those of you interested in boosters, please come out. Um, we definitely need participation and help with that. Uh, class fee, $30 for this class. It's due August 31st. Uh, make that check payable if I can theater booster club, or you can just bring it to school. All right, let's talk about how to choose a monologue, okay? Uh, I feel like this is something hard, and we want to zero in on it this year. So here's the assignment. You're going to choose two monologues. The total time is no longer than 90 seconds, and it should be no shorter than 60 seconds. Each monologue should show... Uh, contrasting characters, you need to be active, you need to interact with imaginary scene partners, and you need to take risks. Uh, this can be due on September 3rd or September 4th, depending on when your class is. Uh, it must be memorized, and it's great on the following rubric. We're looking at acting transitions, characterization, voice, movement, and execution. So let's talk about contrasting characters, okay? You can contrast characters in many different ways. Uh, we have dramatic and comedic, uh, you can do it like by time period, classic and modern. You can be a loud, obnoxious person and then a firm, confident person. Uh, you can play young and old. Uh, so there's a lot of different variables that you can do when, when trying to figure out your contrasting characters. Um, the goal is to show that you have versatility and that you have range, okay? That you're not just a one-dimensional character. When we think sometimes uh, some actors, we would say, are one-dimensional characters a lot of times. Um, Nick Cage comes to mind. Um, Tom Hanks, to a point, comes to mind where, where they sort of play the same type of character and everything. But then you get an actor like Johnny Depp, and you sort of see the range uh, that that actor can play, right? And those are movie actors. Well, you want the same thing for film. What can you play? And I mean, for stage, uh, what can you play? And the, the question is not just what do you want to play, but what can you? So being honest with yourself, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, this is the type of characters I feel like I could do well. Um, and that's what I'm going to go after. So be active. Don't just sit. It's not about sitting and showing that you're memorized. It's not about standing in one position uh, and showing that you're memorized. Acting is reacting. And so that's what we need to see. We need to see you as an actor reacting to this world around you. Interact, okay? An actor's job is to help the audience see what the actor sees. You must interact with the world of the monologue and help us see what you see. That's very important for us, okay? Um, so please, uh, there's a real person on the other side of that fourth wall. You need to see them. You need to make sure that because you see it and it's so real to you that it becomes real for those of us who are watching you. Take risk. Don't play it safe. Don't just do uh, things that you've done before. Um, push yourself to go for emotions that are hard for you to get to. Push yourself for going for experiences that are hard for you to get to. Um, you know, do something that that you're like, wow, I don't think I've ever done this before. So it gives you sort of that urgency that you're going to need. Every audition is not going to lead to you getting cast. Every audition is a chance to grow and learn something about yourself. And that's why you're auditioning. You're not auditioning to be the star of the show. You're auditioning so you can grow and push yourself uh, to whatever that next level is for you. So here is the uh, rubric that we're going to be using. Okay. Um, so this is uh, taken from the uh, Thespian uh, Organization, International Thespian Society. Uh, this is what they use if you were to go and compete um, for that. And so we're looking at acting transitions. Uh, slating. How do you slate? You slate by saying your name, um, the troop you're from. You're from Troop 3463. And you can uh, say what the title of your piece and the authors are all at the beginning. First, I'll be doing a piece by this, and then I'll be doing this. Um, it also is looking at your transition between characters. So are you jumping? Because we're doing two contrasting. 
Or do you take that moment to sort of shift into that next character? What does that look like? And then what's the final moment of each monologue? Where does it leave us? And then at the end, when you transition out back into you again, because we start you, character, character, you, we get a nice look at who you are. You can smile. You can not smile if that's not you. And then you say, thank you, signaling to us that the time has ended. Then we're looking at characterization, okay? Um, emotional and physical believability. Do we believe you by looking at you? Do we believe the emotions you're experiencing? Do we believe the emotion um, that you're portraying? Do we believe you physically that you are this character, that the world is real to you? And are you committed to the character's choices, to the tactics towards an object that create a relationship with this real or implied partner? Are you showing us that we can believe you? And this is a question that you're always going to be asked in theater. I need to believe you. If I don't believe you, it's not good theater. So help me believe you, okay? Voice, projection, articulation, intonation, other chosen vocal techniques that reflect the character's emotions and subtext. So uh, are you using your voice well? Projection is how well are you filling the room? Remember, we don't shout from our, from our chest or our neck. We project from our stomachs, okay? Articulation, how well are you hitting the sounds of the word and are you ending those words as you're going in a way that sounds natural? Intonation is sort of how we vary our voice and we give importance to certain things. Um, are you showing us these things? Are you using your voice in a safe way that, that again, brings us into the character? Movement, staging. This talks about your gestures. How are you using your hands? Are you using them purposefully? Are you, are you using them too much, right? Facial expression. Does your face change and react to things that are going on? Um, you know, these shows that they're starting to film on Broadway where they're getting these close-ups, we're getting these amazing little moments of facial expression. But the little moment, the raising of the eyebrows, right, the the, the, the soft double take, those type of things bring so much to a performance. Um, you've got to make sure that your actions are communicating the character's emotions and subtext. Subtext is what they're feeling but not saying, right? It's the honesty of the character but they can't put it into words. And so you've got to show us that subtext. And lastly, execution. Your concentration, your commitment to moment to moment choices, your integration of all of this stuff, the voice, the body, the emotions that create a believable character and relationship that tells a story. I'm telling you, believability is the most important thing. You have to believe it so we can believe it. So how do you find good monologues? Well, here's what you do. You read plays. You will not be a good actor if you don't spend time and money purchasing plays and reading them. But if you can't read plays, if you don't have the plays, you search online for monologues from plays. When you find a monologue you like, you read the synopsis of the play, you search for recordings of the play, you become familiar with the play, and then you buy the play. Um, don't use and reuse old monologues or popular monologues. Um, don't go for something quick and easy. Don't just search like monologue for a high school guy and then do something by D.L. Larson. I think that was his name or D.M. Larson, something. Don't do that. OK. And D.M. Larson is great in his own regard. And I'm sure if you read D.M. Larson's plays, then you can use his monologues. But if you're just taking his monologue, I don't want you to do that. OK. Don't do monologues that are written by one off writers who are just writing a dribble into paragraphs, but they're not writing it into plays. It doesn't matter if they can write something that seems interesting in 10 sentences. I want someone who has spent time working on a play because now I know the world is real. The characters are real and they mean something. So you're going to start working on that. Here's what it's going to look like. OK, day one today, you're going to start searching for monologues. Day two, you're going to read your monologues out loud for class. Uh, there's going to be a, a sheet called monologue work that I'll put on Schoology for you. Day three, you're going to work on memorization and performance. And day four, you're going to perform your piece complete with a slate and a thank you at the end. And you're going to upload those or we're going to do them in class. So that's what the assignment looks like. If you have questions, let me know. I will be on tomorrow at 1015. I'll post a Google Meet. And those of you who want to jump on, uh, jump on and we will chat. Thanks. Bye.